Hi everyone! This section gives you an overview of typical concerns arising when doing a linear regression on specialized data. This presentation is divided into two parts. First, the presentation of the data and statistical analysis, that is, regression and analysis of variances. Second, the spatial structure of the data and integration in the regression. The data were stored and extracted with the information system FIS from the Silex project. The data come from the PhenoArt platform. My command on R. First, the command set WD set the working directory to the folder where the PhenoArch data file is stored. Next, the command load imports a data frame called MyManip from the PhenoArch data file. Experiments were undertaken to study the response of different genotypes of wheat to drought. The experiments covered two factors. First, the anonymized genotype, and then the scenario of irrigation. With two cases, WD for water deficit and WW for well-watered plants. The phenotype of interest is the plant height, extracted from the digitalized image of each plant taken in March 2012. The localization of the plant in the greenhouse is also given. This is a factorial design with equal sample size. My command on R, the command table summarizes the data into a contingency table which crosses the two factors, genotype and scenario, of our current data frame, my manip. This is a heat map, a drawing in two dimensions of the greenhouse with intensity of color from blue to red relating to the plant height. In other words, we can visualize the plant heights at their localization in the greenhouse. The right part gives a visual impression of lower heights, which is coherent with the experimental design as this part of the greenhouse was under the water deficit scenario. The bottom left corner of the greenhouse looks blue more frequently, so indicating lower plant heights. This may be due to the genotype and its interaction with the scenario of irrigation. The mathematical linear model used correspond to an ANOVA, analysis of variance, with two factors and interaction between these two factors. Mu designates the mean value of the first genotype for the first scenario, WD. Alpha i designates the difference between genotype i and first genotype. Beta J designates the difference between scenario J and the first scenario, WD. Here, J takes only two values, one for WD and two for WW. Gamma IJ designates the interaction effect. Epsilon IJK, the random effects, are supposed to be independent and identically distributed from a normal centered law with variance sigma square. My command on R. The command formula enables us to define the linear model and then it is stored under the name F1. The command LM does the linear regression, estimation of the parameters with the specified data frame, here my manip, and then the results are stored under the name model. The command ANOVA computes and prints the table of analysis of variance. My comment on results? The free effects are significant, p-values under 5%. The residual standard error of the plant heights is a square root of 41,833 and is equal to 204.5 pixels. This value of 204.5 pixels represents the plant height variability which the model cannot predict. This heat map of residuals shows that the height differences due to the scenario of irrigation have been wiped out and shows negative residuals in the bottom left corner of the greenhouse. The model underestimates the height of the plants in that corner. Therefore, we can conclude that the genotype and its interaction with the scenario do not explain the lower heights observed in the bottom left corner of the greenhouse. A special structure in the residuals remains. My comment on R? 
The aim of the first line is to create a copy of the current data frame MyManip under the name CO. From package SP for special patterns, the command coordinate specifies which variables are used to define the coordinates of the plants. From package GSTAT, the command variogram computes the experimental variogram of the standardized residuals from the linear model. In the last line, the command plot draws the experimental variogram to visually check the existence of a spatial structure. My command on the plot? Imagine two widely spaced plants. Do you expect them to show synergy? No, you expect the distance to increase the variability between plants. This is exactly what is represented in the semi-variogram. Each point of the experimental semi-variogram represents half the variance between residual heights of the greenhouse plants, separated by a specified distance. For adjacent plants, the half variance of semi-variance is around 0.85 and not null. This value is called the nugget effect. For a distance higher than 15 units, the semi-variance is stabilized and has reached a seal of 1. What can we conclude? Under a distance of 15 units, there is a special correlation between plants. In other words, we assume that a plant can influence the other plants in a range of 15 units. With the following rule, the closer they are, the more they are related, as the variance increases with distance, within the range of 15 units. So, what can we conclude? Under a distance of 15 units, there is a special correlation between plants. In other words, we assume that a plant can influence the other plants in a range of 15 units with the following rule. The closer they are, the more they are related, as the variance increases with distance within the range of 15 units. My command on the left plot? The experimental variogram is adjusted with a model defined by three parameters. The nugget, meaning the variance between two adjacent plants. The range, the distance beyond which we expect plants to be uncorrelated. The seal means the point at which the maximum value and independence is reached. My comment on the right plot? There are several mathematical models for variograms. Among them, the most usual are the exponential and the Gaussian models for smooth increases of the variance inside the range the linear and spherical models for a rapid increase in the variance inside the range. Just one remark. However, a variogram can be used on condition that the variable of interest is assumed to be stationary. How do we take the spatial correlation into account? This is also called spatial autocorrelation because the correlation is computed between variables of the same interest. Plant heights but with a special lag between two plants. My comment on the model? The linear model is modified to include the spatial structure. Random effects epsilon, i, j, k are no longer independent, but correlated. The correlation is equal to 1 minus the variogram. Here, we get the formula for an exponential model of a variogram. Remark. The assumption that the variable is stationary is fulfilled for the random variable epsilon and therefore for the residuals later. The mean value for the residuals is zero, same constant for every localization in the greenhouse. The variance is sigma square, same constant for every localization in the greenhouse. The correlation between two plants depends only on the distance between plants and of course, on the variogram parameters nugget, seal and range. My command on R? Command LM was replaced by command GLS from package NLME. The correlation structure is defined with the optional term correlation, which specifies the exponential model for the variogram with the keyword core EXP. The variables to use for localization, ear line and position and the existence of a nugget effect. Choose between true or false. How do we choose a variogram model from the list of possible models? First, do a visual inspection of the experimental variogram. Next, for a model comparison, there are different criteria. Here, we suggest the usual IKK information criteria, or AIC. 
AIC is equal to minus twice the likelihood of the model computed on the data, plus twice the number of parameters of the model. Therefore, a good model is characterized by a high likelihood and a reasonable number of parameters to avoid overfitting. Hence, when looking at the AIC, it appears that a good model is characterized by a low AIC. Here, it's the exponential model or the Gaussian model. We choose the exponential model. No special structure seems present in the residuals any longer. The chosen model seems to have caught all the information from the data. Imagine, we learn some new information that a window is present on the bottom left side of the greenhouse. This window may have had an impact on the plant heights as cooler temperatures may have infiltrated from the window into the greenhouse. This information suggests a new model with a new variable to add for the regression instead of a spatial correlation. To conclude, this case illustrates the complexity of the statistical analysis when data are specialized. The spatial variability needs to be taken into account into the model or the analysis. Choosing a good model is not so easy. All the above presented points are presented in more detail in the OpenSpad blended learning pack. Thank you for listening. Here you have a bibliography to do further research in your own time.